Hello, good to see you. Pastor Sam with my smallest of the special guests joining me today. We'll see how long she wants to uh, sit there. I'm going to bring this a little bit closer to me. I've got another special guest. Oh, there we go. You see? Oh, you've got Oletta. Uh, anyway, Romans 9, we are jumping quite a ways. We were in Romans 4 last time. Romans 9 today, second half of chapter 9, and we're going to be dealing with a very difficult topic, and that's kind of um, saying and wrestling with why some people are saved and why others are not. Now, I'll spoil it. I have no idea. Um, we'll see in our text, there's really no answer, and that's because I think for one, we don't know the answer. Well, for one, we don't know the answer. Uh, this is a thing that God knows. And for another, we shouldn't know the answer. That's my speculation. I, I think that we shouldn't. We don't know. Uh, God hasn't told us why some people are saved and others are not. But what we're going to be looking at in our text is uh, something of a, um, a special case. Like, why was Israel, why are there some, even to this day, Jewish people who are not saved? And we'll, we'll have something... Not really an answer to the why, but at least how. How is it the case that they are not, were not, will not be saved? Some of them. Some of them. So that's kind of what we're looking at today. I'm, I'm going to say a few things. Ultimately, we, we won't and we can't answer that question. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to read Romans 9, 19 through 33. You will say to me then, why does he, God, still find fault? For who can resist his will? But who are you, O man, to answer back to God? Will what is molded say to its molder, why have you made me like this? Has the potter no right over the clay to make out of the same lump one vessel for honorable use and another for dishonorable use? What if God, desiring to show his wrath and to make known his power, has endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction, in order to make known the riches of his glory for vessels of mercy, which he has prepared beforehand for glory, even to us whom he has called, not from the Jews only, but also from the Gentiles? As indeed he says in Hosea, Those who were not my people, I will call my people. And her who was not beloved, I will call beloved. And in the very place where it was said to them, You are not my people, there they will be called sons of the living God. And Isaiah cries out concerning Israel, Though the number of the sons of Israel be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will be saved. For the Lord will carry out his sentence upon the earth fully and without delay. And as Isaiah predicted, If the Lord of hosts had not left us offspring, we would have been like Sodom and become like Gomorrah. What shall we say then? That Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained it, that is, a righteousness that is by faith? But that Israel, who pursued a law that would lead to righteousness, did not succeed in reaching that law. Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith, but as if it were based on works. They have stumbled over the stumbling stone, as it is written, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So what I want to do, and earlier up in this chapter, you can see it's called God's Sovereign Choice. And, and I, I, I guess more lately, the, the headings I have by and large agreed with. And we're getting a little bit of insight um, into the choosing of God. And Paul talks about here, you can read this first half of the chapter, how he, how he chose Jacob but not Esau, and how God chose the people of Israel to be his people. But then, and Paul kind of talks about this more so down here with Israel's unbelief, that even though God had chosen the people of Israel, it is the case that some of them, are not saved. Some of them are really not God's people. And so how can it be the case on the one hand where God has specifically chosen 
the people of Israel to be his people and to be saved. And then on the other hand, that there be some of those same ones that he chose who are not saved. So we're going to look at it sort of in the reverse of how we typically answer it, because I think it leads us to more helpful answers. What I mean by that is sometimes we look at it like, uh, how could God allow people not to be saved? Or, or even uh, a little more uh, hostility, hostility lily, with, with hostility we say, why would God make people who are just going to go to hell? As, as if God had made them for the express purpose of sending them to hell. And I don't think that's the case. So we're not going to look at it antagonistically. There we go. That's the word that I'm looking for. But we're going to look at it from the perspective of here's this group of people, Israel, who were at one time all God's people and all were saved. Um, yeah, at one time. I think I can say that. At least as far as Abraham and Sarah go. Uh, but now, through, throughout history and even now, there are some, again, Israel, Jewish people, who are not saved. So what, what caused the difference? That's kind of what Paul is getting at and what we're going to be looking at. Now, first of all, this is on, on the one, for, for one thing, a dangerous question to ask. Because Paul is going to start out by saying, uh, and, and this is one of those, it's a rhetorical question. You know, people are going to say, well, if God does whatever he wants... Oh. Sort of, then, then what's... Oop, my special guest needs to go. Julia, will you please stay downstairs here? Stay downstairs, thank you. People will, will say... Um, I just totally lost my train of thought. Uh, if God does whatever he wants, oh, then, then, then it really doesn't matter, right? Like if God has already decided if I'm going to heaven or if I'm going to hell, then I can just do whatever I want because how am I going to... How am I going to change what God has decided? And, and that's something of a, a false logic, where God knows who will be in heaven and who will be in hell. He knows this information, but he doesn't cause, he doesn't cause any individual to either go to heaven or go to hell. And, and there's, there's well, I'm, I'm going to try to kind of dance on the line of God gives us, as we'll see down at the bottom, he gives us righteousness through faith, and, and, and it is um, hmm. and, and it is that faith which I possess, which is saving. But if I try to do if I try to not pursue it by faith, but by some other way, then, then it is uh, my inability, excuse me, inability, which sends me to hell. The, I'm going to try to use very specific and, and probably sometimes some very strang, strange language, it's easy to get, it's easy, it's easy for me to get off track and to say things that, that I don't know to be true, that, that may be true, but I don't know that they are true. And, and so I'm, I'm going to try to not guess. I'm going to try to not give speculation. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to give answers that I know are true. They might not be satisfying answers, and they won't be answers to all of our questions, but I'm going to give what God has revealed to us, which, which is not very much. But anyway, getting back to where I started, this is a dangerous question on the one hand. Who are you, O oh man, to answer back to God? So it's um, a, a little bit, I can't think of the words this afternoon, uh, bad, there we go. It's not a great word, but whatever. For us as created things to say to our creator, what do you think you're doing? Like, why are you doing the things that you're doing? Right? Well, what does molded say to its molder? Why have you made me like this? It, it's the one who creates, who has the knowledge and skill and foresight to, uh, to cause his created thing to be a certain way. And who has made it for a specific purpose. And we'll get into that a little bit further down here the purpose for which God has created us. And, and we don't, we come in the way, we get in the way of that purpose sometimes. So we, we do know 
God endures which, with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction, which, which is all people. All people are kind of from the get-go prepared for destruction, destined to be damned to hell. That's, that's our starting position, is as unbelievers, as people who are prepared for destruction. And out of this group, God grants faith, God gives faith, we, we come to possess faith, and are, and are lifted out of that group. If we consider Israel as the first case, there were all of these nations in the world, and God chose specifically Israel to be his people. Now, um, no, I don't want to. There, there's all kind of it's a tangent questions. I don't think I want to go down. Otherwise, this is going to be like a 50-minute devotion. And I don't have time for that for one thing. And I don't have the voice for that for another thing. So uh, ask me those questions when you see me, if you're really interested. But anyway, God chose Israel to be his people. And, and just for, for the sake of him wanting to make a choice. We don't know why exactly. We don't know how he came to choose Israel. He just did it. See, that's one of those not very satisfying answer. And God then extends it. All of us are these vessels of wrath prepared for destruction. And some of us, uh, some of us become vessels of mercy prepared for glory, which would be salvation, uh, heaven, we sometimes call it. So some of us who are prepared for destruction become, through a process, prepared for glory. And not just the Jews, but also the Gentiles. And then he quotes Hosea saying, hold on, I need to, need to tell Julia not to jump. That's what I was going to say. And I have acquired a special guest. Okay, so Paul quotes Hosea saying that those who are not my people, I will call my people. And so there's a little bit of uh, not contradiction, but, but expansion. Because in verse 13, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. So God chose Jacob hey. and didn't choose Esau. But now down here, those who are not my people, I will call my people. And her who is not beloved, we could say, the one who is hated, I will call beloved. So even though this, this lower passage kind of answers this one up here that I know wasn't in our reading, um, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. And we, we could kind of, by extension, the, the Jews I loved, but the Gentiles I hated. But now, the one who is not loved, I will call loved. So the Gentiles, whom I formerly did not choose, God says, whereas I chose the Jews, now I am choosing all of them. The one who was not my beloved, the one who is not my people, um, you are not my people. Right, God is extending, expanding the possibility of salvation to everyone, which was the case even in the days of Israel. Evie, come on, honey. Because God made them, one, one of the purposes of Israel was to be a light to the nations, was to show God's love and mercy and salvation to the nations around them in the hopes that in the hopes that the nations would would trust in God and would worship God, and by and large, they didn't. They rejected that offer and kind of went their own way, which leads to the part down here and why and, and how it is the case that Israel, who was fully and wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y, wholly, the whole of them, was chosen, now has some who are who, who have kind of given that up or gotten rid of that. And, and why others got, got scooted in. So there's like shuffling going on in, in the, the saving world. There's a lot of shuffling. The Gentiles, who did not pursue righteousness, right, who, who, were, not, who, who were not God's people, who were not his beloved, who we can kind of identify. I'm not saying they are Esau, or, or, but, they, but they are similar too. They were not chosen are now chosen and have a righteousness that is by faith in Jesus Christ. But Israel, the one who was chosen, remember, Jacob I loved, have not 
did not succeed in reaching the law. Why? Well, that's an interesting question. And thankfully, Paul answers that one. They did not pursue it by faith, but as, a, as if it were based on works. So faith, faith is on one hand the great leveler and also the, the method, the avenue for being part of that, that people. I think the people were over here. And so it's not a matter of looking at it in an exclusive light as if these people are chosen and to hell, literally, with everyone else, but, but as an inclusive way that this group of saved people is open to everyone and lots of different people can be coming into this group. How do they do that? Well, by faith in Jesus Christ. And so it's not really a matter of God picking and saying, okay, you people over here, I love you, you're going to be saved, you people over here, to hell with you, literally. It's not a matter of him doing that. And, and of him, and even worse than that, it's not as though he made these people just so he could throw them into hell. That's not, not how God does that. But he made all people in the hopes that they would hear about his son Jesus, that they would trust in Jesus, and that they would be included in, in over here, in his chosen people, in his beloved, in his spiritual Israel. Slight air quotes. Paul uses that in the next chapter, I want to say. So maybe we'll cover it on Saturday. But anyway, it's faith. Faith, faith, faith. That makes the difference. And so there's, there's questions that we still can't really answer. Why, why is it the case that some people have faith and others don't? Well, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't, have you ever asked someone that question? You probably won't get very kind answers. Like, why, why are you not believing in Jesus? And they'll be like, well, they'll probably give you an answer. It might be a very rude answer, but they may very well give you an answer. Um, that's, that's the kind of answer that I think is reasonable for this question. Why don't people believe? I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. But then again, uh, I'm a believer, so I guess it wouldn't not make sense to me to not believe. Anyway, uh, faith. Faith is the ticket in. It's not God selecting a people and then excluding everyone else, but it's God making, making himself known in Jesus and then spreading that message of salvation in Jesus Christ and people coming and believing in being in the saved group. That's, that's kind of more the way that we need to look at it. So let's pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you for the gift of faith and for giving it to us, and we ask that you would continue to strengthen our faith, keep us as your people until we stand before you in glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you tuning in. Come back on Saturday. We'll have another devotion. God's peace be with you until then.